This program was sponsored by uh, the Western Regional Homeland Security Advisory Council, WORSAC, here for us. Uh, all four counties of Western Massachusetts are being represented. A total of about 50 participants between the two sessions, and I believe almost 30 agencies represented, both law enforcement, corrections, fire, and EMS-based. We're spending time learning about appropriate care during different austere environments or in austere environments, thinking about hazardous environments where we may not normally operate. The training helps highlight the need for special response as well as awareness for all responders to be able to act in situations that may be uh, unsafe for them uh, otherwise or not normal for them otherwise. So I think the biggest reason I would say that this is crucial uh, to have these kind of events sponsored by the Regional Council is that any one of these events, an MCI, um, a shooting that involves a large number of people would be a regional response and the ability to have a set of training that everyone has uh, worked with, um, protocols that have been established, um, communication between people that you know that you've worked with and trained with uh, across different uh, regions and counties. Really Western Mass is a small place when you start calling in mutual aid. So uh, all these folks who work together are the folks that I've gotten to see in the last two days. I've worked with most of them somewhere in my career, somewhere else. So bringing all these pieces together and having us train together is, uh, is imperative to our future success with events, large scale events. I had no idea all the different aspects that go into entering a room the, a certain way and the stuff that just the medical side you don't see being on the ambulance unless you're on part of this team. Um, the tactical side of the medicine I had never worked with before so this has also broadened that for me a little bit and shown me just different aspects of being able to use your medicine in different areas I should say. This allows our participants to utilize high fidelity simulation to treat life-threatening emergencies that could occur from active threat or hazardous environments including bleeding, airway management, tension pneumothoraces, burns, and more. Um, while we go through these trainings, participants participate in lectures as well as practical evolutions. And one of the most important things I think we get out of this collaborative training by having all of these uh, different folks from different backgrounds together is their ability to share their own experiences and knowledge, um, not just with the curriculum, but with their past and how this applies to them. I think working with the live dummies was super beneficial. Um, seeing blood come out and knowing where to put a tourniquet and where to put combat gauze and stuff like that just kind of made it a little bit more real than putting a tourniquet on your friend in training. I mean, you only put it on there until they say, ouch, whereas here you do it until the bleeding actually stops. I think everybody should be doing this. Um, we live in a very dynamic world and we need to start planning for worst case scenarios. Sandy Hook can happen in Greenfield. Uh, it can happen in South Deerfield. It can happen in Berkshire County. It can happen in any of the counties to get the interdepartment agencies working together to be on the same page and expose PD to bleeding machines, to tourniquets, to triage, and get them on the same page as fire departments and EMS. Um, that's, I believe, the, one of the most criti critical parts of this course, is to get everybody on the same page. So we're talking about the worst of the worst, the maybe once in a career situations that nobody really wants to be involved in or um, you know, ever dreams of being involved in. We're talking about the worst case scenario and being able to plan for that and being able to train for that is important, but also these day-to-day -day skills can help you in just the normal patient, whether it's a medical emergency or in trauma. These two-day programs and larger initiatives are special and wonderful and benefit, but it is the ongoing training. Uh, like Brian said, these are perishable skills, and every four years or six years to refresh isn't enough. So finding opportunities to do this on a more regular schedule with all providers and supporting them in ongoing skills maintenance um, and, and training and awareness would present a, a strong opportunity.